Dear students, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Manzur Ahmad Ghanai, lecturer history. Today we are going to start unit number 6 of our syllabus in 12th class history subject. And, our, and the name of the unit is Kings and Chronicles, the Mughal Courts. Dear students, in this unit we have to talk about the pattern and system of Mughal, co Mughal Courts, especially of Akbar, and the uh, different chronicles. Uh, of the rulers in which and we have to ask to also to discuss how have been rulers depicted Mughal rulers depicted in these chronicles and the very first question that we have to discuss in this unit is what is meant by chronicle what were the important features of Mughal chronicles dear students a chronicle can be defined as a text that provides a record of important historical events in a chronological order or in the order of their occurrence means that a book in which the events of different rulers were written in chronological order by different writers these are known as chronicles for example about Akbar a book was written namely Akbar Nama by Obul Fazl and this book narrates the events of Akbar's life all important events of Akbar's life in a chronological order, in a sequential order. And this book is known as Chronicle, in which all events of the life, all events, important historical events are narrated in a chronological order. Similarly, there were other also other chronicles uh, written during the time of Mughals as well. Another important chronicle is Padshah Nama, written by Abdul Hamid Lahori about Shah Jahan. So there were several chronicles written by different uh, uh, court historians of Mughal rulers uh, like, like Babur, like Humayun, like uh, Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb. And now the question is, what are the important features of chronicles written by different uh, court historians of Mughal rulers and during the period of Mughals from 16th to 16th and 17th centuries? Number one feature we can discuss. Chronicles were mostly written by the court historians on behalf of the Mughal emperors, Mughal rulers. Means that whatever chronicles were written, the chronicles were mostly written by those people who were the important members of the court of the uh, members of the court of the rulers. The royal court hota tha, the ruled the royal palace of the royal court of the uh, king and it was the king who used to assign this job to a particular person who was pet to the to the king who was most favorite to the king like Abul Fazl was one of the favorite persons to to, to Akbar and Akbar ordered Abul Fazl to write history of his life so who he wrote this book on behalf of the king. Similarly, most of the chronicles were written on behalf of the king, on the, at, at behest of the king. It was king who made people to write about their histories. That's first point. Second point, these chronicles are an important source for studying the Mughal Empire and the courts of different uh, Mughal rulers. Number three, the authors of these chronicles the writers of these chronicles have mainly focused on the events linked to the ruler, his family, his courts, his administrative system, his palaces, his nobles. Means that the chronicles which have been written during the time of Mughals have mainly been focused on writing about the different events of king's life. Uh, which are related to him, like his rule, his family, his nobles, his ministers, and his court, his uh, conquests, and other things. Number next, we understand that the chronicles were mostly written in Persian, which was the court language of Mughals. Number next, the court chronicles tried to show we can say the writers of the chronicles, known as chroniclers, they try to show 
that the power of the king, power of the Mughal ruler, came from God, that the Mughal ruler was chosen by God himself. Therefore, try to show to people, try to make people understand that since God was chosen by God, this king was chosen by God, therefore it was mandatory for all people to follow and to uh, listen to the advices of the of the God and obey the obey this uh, obey the advice of the ruler. Obey whatever orders were given by the king, all must obey those orders because king was um, this uh, selected, king was sent on them by the God. Such a picture of these kings was portrayed by the uh, by uh, the chroniclers in the chronicles. Number next, the chronicles present the Mughal rulers as the only fit personalities deserving to rule each and everyone. Means that in the, in the chronicles, the writers or the chroniclers have depicted such a picture of the Mughal rulers and that it, it seems that it were only these rulers these personalities who were fit to rule one and all. So, in other, another point we can say, the chroniclers have only highlighted the positive points of the positive points of the kings without giving any importance to their faults. Because there is a reason for this. It is believed that the writers who wrote these chronicles, they were paid for writing these chronicles by the king. Therefore, if a chronicler tried to write something against the king, then he was not going to be paid anything by the king. So, at all times, the chroniclers try to praise the king in their, in their writings, in their chronicles. As a result, the king used to give more and more money and other facilities to them. So, as a result, we understand, the chroniclers have mostly discussed about the positive points and greatnesses of the kings without giving any place to their faults and problems. We also understand common people have hardly been mentioned in the chronicles. These common people have only been mentioned at places where there was some relation. They have been mentioned at some places but in, rela in relation, in some relation with the king. So directly there is no mention of common people in the chronicles found at all. Thank you.